Um, anybody who took the botanic tour will need no de degrees, and teaching and research at the garden declined. But Dr. Hiscock, a specialist in evolutionary genetics and plant reproductive biology, is determined, he says, to bring science back to the garden and push the message about the importance of plants for all life on the planet. Dr. Hiscock. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. I hope you can all hear me. It was great to see uh, so many of you at the uh, Botanic Garden for the tour this afternoon, even if it was a little bit of a, a shock. Um, so, as I said to the, the guests uh, earlier in the day, um, it's three years ago exactly to the day that I became the director of Oxford Botanic Garden and Arboretum after uh, 15 years uh, at the University of, of Bristol where I led the development of a new uh, botanic garden there. So I moved from the newest university botanic garden to the oldest uh, to meet uh, a very different set of challenges. And my vision and mission from from day one, um, as uh, Elizabeth has alluded to there, is, is, is really to make the Oxford Botanic Garden and Arboretum um, a garden and arboretum of, of science, um, and to use that science uh, in, an, in a creative and engaging way um, to show how important plants are to people's everyday lives. Um, and indeed to the future of our planet as our population continues to grow at an exponential rate. In this brief prologue to what promises to be a, a very exciting meeting, I want to start by saying a few words um, about one of the most pivotal events in the history of life on Earth. Uh, namely, the evolution of the seed. Without this event, there really would be, I don't think, the human beings we see today and know as ourselves, and neither the civilizations that human beings created. So, hence, the title of my uh, brief talk uh, this afternoon. We all know that all life on Earth depends on plants, predominantly green plants, that are able to carry out what on paper there seems a very simple biochemical reaction, uh, namely combining light with water and CO2 via um, chloroplasts and chlorophyll to make energy which then translates into, into life. So without photosynthesis, and there are other uh, non-green organisms that can photosynthesize as well, the red and brown algae um, of our oceans, but on land it is the green plants uh, that are the basis of all food chains that, that take light energy and turn it into uh, the food that, that we as, as, as non-photosynthetic organisms consume. So what are the green plants? Well, the, these are just a few images of some of the, the main groups of plants that we see um, on Earth today. All, all land plants evolved from green algae that came out onto the land um, after the initial invasion by fungi um, about 450 to 480 million years ago. And these green algae slimed out onto the land and colonized the marginal uh, watery 
areas. They were in effect sort of amphibians of the, the plant world. And these looked something similar to maybe the, um, the, the liverworts and the hornworts, uh, so-called bryophytes, along with mosses that we see today. And then over geological time, um, through the um, Devonian period mainly, these early land plants um, changed and diversified and, and, and grew and developed a plumbing system to move water um, through their bodies and roots to suck up water from the um, developing soils and larger leaves uh, to make the process of photosynthesis um, more efficient. But all these plants right up to about 300 and uh, 60 million years ago, all reproduced via spores in an analogous way to, to the fungi that were here before them. So they were the spore plants. And today, the ferns, the horsetails, um, and the bryophytes are all uh, spore-producing plants. A key event came at about... 360, 370, the fossil record is very incomplete. Um, a key event was the evolution of the seed, which is a complicated modification of uh, the reproduction that was inherited from these plants via their aquatic ancestors. And what the seed was able to do was it, was allo it, it allowed plants to disperse without the aid of water because as Corner, the great um, tropical botanist and evolutionary biologist called the seed, it's a little box with a baby plant in it and a food source in the form of, of, of endosperm. Um, some biologists have, have called it analogous to um, the mammals of, um, of, of, of land plants because the, the, the endosperm that feeds the embryo plant within a seed is a bit like um, a placenta. So this event was, was, was really important and it coincided with a very dry period um, of, of, of life on Earth. So this seed allowed plants to survive periods of drought and then to germinate and grow and be dispersed over long distances without the necessity for water. All these plants require water for their um, motile sperm to swim in in order to affect fertilization. So these and what we now know today, all that's left of the seed plants, are the gymnosperms, the, 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 the conifers, the pines, um, yew trees, etc. And the majority are what we call the flowering plants. So 90% of what we have on the planet now are the flowering plants. But these are seed plants that are highly specialised and only appear in the fossil record about... 140 million years ago. So these are newcomers, and these are the most advanced of the um, land plants in terms of their ability to reproduce. And flowering plants are what feeds us. We get a few, we, 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 we do use some seeds from gymnosperms as, as food sources. The, um, the, 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 the pine nuts of, of, of stone pine in our pesto and various uh, similar, but, but, but very, very minor component of our human diets. Most of our food comes either directly or indirectly from the reproductive process of flowering plants. First, to create the, the seed, uh, and a seed develops from a structure called an ovule which contains the egg and that egg is fertilized by a sperm cell that is delivered by 
a pollen tube from a pollen grain, which is analogous to the, the, the sort of mammalian, the animal sperm system. But in plants, there are two sperm cells. In, in flowering plants, there are two sperm cells. One fertilizes the egg to make the new embryo plant. The other one fertilizes a specialized cell called a central cell, which is diploid, to create a triploid, which means it has three copies of the um, base chromosome number and that doesn't create an embryo it creates a structure called the endosperm and that then proliferates and it, it, it sequesters starches and proteins and nutrients to pack that seed full of all the resources that the little baby plant needs in order to start its life when it finds water and a suitable place. And the, the coat of that ovule then hardens with lignin to become the seed coat. These are the pips of the fruits, so the little boxes with a plant inside. But then the rest of the flower starts to modify, mostly the ovary, which then fills up with, 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 with mainly sugars and changes colour to attract animals which come and eat the fruits that are formed from these other parts of the flower to disperse the seeds. And of course, many seeds, they don't want to be, um, they don't want to be uh, 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 consumed by, the, by the, the animals, so they have laxative properties that allow the seeds to be dispersed. Um, syrup of figs is, is an evolutionary adaptation to make sure that the monkeys eat the fruit but they don't digest the seeds and off they go. So moving on, that's the biology um, in a nutshell, if you pardon the pun, behind a seed. Seeds from flowering plants, incredibly important. 70% of all human food, either directly or indirectly, comes from seed. And the critically important ones in terms of human civilizations have come from grasses. And three grasses in particular, corn, maize, wheat, um, and rice, and also to a, a smaller extent, um, millet and sorghum, and various pulses have, have increased the diversity of that diet. We know that the human beings of today, Homo sapiens, had their evolutionary origins on the plains of Africa. Um, as, as human beings developed, they were mainly hunter-gatherers, uh, living on the plains, moving around, not settled. It was only after the discovery and utilization of certain um, cereals, particularly wheat um, in the Fertile Crescent, that allowed humans to settle down and use these plants to develop agriculture and the whole process of domestication. And by selecting um, grasses, wheat, with larger and larger seeds, they were able to create more um, seeds in order to make bread. And that is the basis of the civilizations that developed in the Fertile Crescent, because as you settle down and make villages and towns and cities, you can div you, th there can be division of labor and there can be um, the, 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 the development of civilization and art and all the things that go with, with civilization. Um, and these are some of the earliest um, examples um, of um, towns and cities that utilized um, wheat in particular, and you can see even artistic images of wheat uh, in Iraqi for, and um, Egyptian art. But it wasn't just here, there were civilizations evolving in other parts of the globe, again based on rice in Asia, 
um, millet to some extent in India and parts of Africa, sorghum um, in Western Africa, and maize in the Americas. And these are the cereals and what um, the plants, the seeds that created civilization. And that's what we convey in our display at the Botanic Garden, plants that changed the world that some of you saw uh, earlier today. The importance of domestication for the development of agriculture, for the development of human civilization. And plants will become even more important as we move towards 7 billion, well we are at 7 billion, in a few years time we could be 8.5 billion and it's estimated that um, in no time we will be 11 billion. And the use and more effective use of plants to produce seeds is critical to the survival of us and the survival of our planet. So there are seeds in their wider context. So, thank you. <laughs>